Hello, I am Dr. Padma Priya and we will discuss about non-tuberculous mycobacteria, its diagnosis and clinical management in the next couple of slides. Uh, non-tuberculous mycobacteria refers to mycobacterial species other than mycobacterium tuberculous complex, M. leprae and M. lepromatosis. These are ubiquitous organisms in the environment found in soil and water and humans acquire the infection from the environment. Most of them are non-pathogenic but some can cause human disease. They usually affect the lungs, lymph node, joints, CNS. Infection has also been reported from catheter as well as laparoscopic port sites. They can also cause disseminated infection in susceptible or immunocompromised individuals. Now what is so important about these NTMs? Now sputum smear microscopy that is a cornerstone of diagnosis of acid fast bacilli in public health programs can detect these NTMs as acid fast bacilli positive. The moment AFB positive is detected, this is diagnosed as tuberculosis and in many countries they are treated for uh, M tuberculosis. The inability to differentiate between NTM from M tuberculosis by sputum microscopy may lead to wrong diagnosis and resulting in inappropriate treatment, in turn increasing the burden on logistics, infrastructures as well as finances. Now, NTMs are often resistant to antibiotics and anti-tuberculosis treatment that is commonly used in the national programs. It can also be misdiagnosed as multiple uh, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis when they do not respond to the regular anti-TB treatment. Increasing notification of mycobacterial disease as either relapse of TB or drug resistant can also be because of increasing uh, non-tuberculous mycobacterial infection. Now, what is the interaction between non-tuberculous mycobacteria and the host factor? Now, NTM pathogenicity depends upon the load of the organism in the affected host and also what the species of NTM that is causing the infection. In the host factor, susceptibility of the host basically it is immunocompromised or immunocompetent state as well as a local defense mechanism plays a major role. Now, both the interaction of NTM pathogen as well as the host or the bug and the host results in a variety of outcomes. It could be simple contamination of the respiratory tract or uh, any of the uh, body tracts or it could be a transient colonization. It can also go on to avert disease. Now, pathogenicity of NTM uh, is what is listed on the right side of the slide. The pathogenicity increases from bottom to up. It starts from intracellular which is the least pathogenic organism and as you see as it goes up cancer psi or malmanesi is the most pathogenic uh, organism uh, causing human disease. Rindian classification of NTM divides the uh, non-tuberculous mycobacteria into two groups slow growers and rapid growers. Among the slow growers we have M cancer psi causing pathogenic uh, uh, disease, scrofulaceum, M avium, M intracellulare, M xenopi. All of these are commonly encountered in human, uh, uh, human causing uh, lung infections or lung disease. The, among the rapid growers, we have variety of organisms starting from M fortutum, uh, smegmatis, M abscesses and M boleti. All of them uh, resulting in pathogenic disease in humans. NTM can present either in the form of um, chronic pulmonary disease or lymphadenitis or it could be post inoculation either in the form of laparoscopic ports or catheter in uh, catheter. It can also cause disseminated disease. Increasing incidence and prevalence of NTM is commonly uh, seen it is mainly due to improved clinician awareness or because of enhanced detection methods that is used to diagnose NTM and speciate them. It is also due to variety of changing environmental uh, factors, mycobacterial and host factors. Now, since NTM pulmonary disease has a major impact on the public health scenario, I would like to discuss NTM pulmonary disease uh, in the next few slides. Uh, NTM can cause progressive inflammatory lung damage. It can be due to both slow growing as well as rapid growers. Among the slow growers of clinical importance are M avium complex, M cancer and M xenopi and among the rapid growers we have M abscesses and M chelone along with M fortutum. These vary you know, in distribution not only between the countries but also within the countries even there is a change, variation between the north and south of a country. The species also differ in the pathogenic potential and most of them present with respiratory symptoms very akin to tuberculosis.
So, the non tuberculous mycobacterial pulmonary disease, there are various risk factors both among the exposure as well as in the host factors. Among the host factors, the most important are pre existing lung disease like asthma, COPD, pneumoconiosis, or bronchiectasis. Other comorbidities like rheumatoid arthritis or low vitamin D, low body mass index, malnutrition, all of them can contribute to a person getting infected with NTMs. Some of the medications that are commonly used, like proton pump inhibitors or prolonged use of antibiotics can also make an individual susceptible to NTM. So, how do we diagnose NTM pulmonary disease? When an individual presents to a clinician uh, with symptoms of cough and fever and not responding to the regular anti tuberculosis or antibacterial treatment, there should be high suspicion of NTM pulmonary disease. Three sputum samples are collected and sent for acid fast bacilli by smear microscopy and also culture. Now, if all the three AFP smears comes negative, uh, in the culture for NTM, but this is clinical suspicion still persisting, then a CT scan chest is uh, in order. A CT scan chest is suggestive of uh, NTM, you can do a bronchoscopic aspirate and lavage, send it for culture again. If the CT scan chest is negative for uh, uh, lung pathology, consider alternate diagnosis. At the same time, if all the th uh, two, if any two of the three sputum comes as positive for NTM species, you can still order a HRCT and if the HRCT is positive for NTM, then you consider treatment for non tuberculous mycobacteria. If HRCT is negative, then you think for other diagnosis, uh, alternate diagnosis of this pulmonary infection. Now, of the three sputum samples, what to do if you have only one sputum sample that is positive for NTM? These are the cases where HRCT is recommended uh, strongly. If HRCT is negative for NTM, CT directed bronchoscopy is uh, very much warranted, the aspirate or lavage is sent for NTM culture. At the same time, if HRCT shows positivity, then the patient uh, cultures are negative, it is warranted to follow up the patient regularly with repeat sputum and HRCT. And if any of those culture becomes positive, uh, patient has to be treated for NTM pulmonary disease. Now, what are the clinical criteria for diagnosing uh, NTM pulmonary disease? So, this is from the ATS guidelines uh, as well as the British thoracic uh, guidelines for management of NTM disease. In clinical, there are clinical criteria as well as microbiological criteria. The clinical criteria, all the, all the criteria should be positive and they are pulmonary symptoms um, plus chest x-ray showing nodular or cavitary opacities and CT scan showing multifocal bronchiectasis with multiple small nodules. All of this plus exclusion of other diagnosis of pulmonary disease. Looking at the microbiological criteria, we have three criteria and they are alternate uh, criteria. You should have positive culture from at least two separate expectorated sputum sample or one positive culture from bronchial wash or lavage or a transbronchial or other lung biopsies with the mycobacterial histopathological features and positive culture for NTM. So, we need to have a clinical criteria as well as a microbiological criteria positive to diagnose a case of NTM. The sputum could be an induced sputum and the induced sputum you need to have minimum of two early morning sputum samples collected on two separate days and sent for culture. Now, the sputum collection to be done after thoroughly, thoroughly gargling his mouth and ruling out oral candidiasis. Now, if you remember immunocompromised state is one of the very important state where you diagnose NTM pulmonary disease. Therefore, it is very important to rule out oral candidiasis before a sputum is collected for NTM. The sample collected should be processed within 24 hours of collection and if it is not possible to refrigerate, refrigerate the sputum sample at 4 degree if a delay is anticipated. Uh, looking at the investigations, chest x-ray is a mandatory investigation for NTM pulmonary disease. Individuals with positive cultures of M cancer or MAC, the chest x-ray evidence of lung cavitation is an important prognostic factor during the uh, treatment follow up. As we discussed before, CT scan is another important diagnostic uh, tool for NTM pulmonary disease. Now, coming to the microbiological test, most important test for uh, diagnosing NTM is the identification of the species. All NTM isolates from the sample should be identified at least to the species level using validated techniques. Few of the techniques that are commonly used are line probe assays and Malditoff mass spectrometry. These two tests helps us to identify the species level of uh, non tuberculous mycobacteria. 
whole genome sequencing is also now being more commonly used. More detail of these tests were discussed in the previous uh, lecture on diagnosis of M mycobacterium. Now the yellow, uh, yellow picture that you see on this slide is uh, nothing but a culture of M cancer. Now multiple techniques have been used to speciate these uh, which includes uh, as I said PCR technique or HPLC methodology. Um, these uh, and also 16S ribosomal DNA defines NTM species more accurately. Many of these tests may not be available in all centers, uh, but they can always be sent to a tertiary level before we start treating a patient of NTM pulmonary disease. Uh, this, this slide shows various banding. Um, so, these are the bands that you see. These are very fixed bands on a line probe assay and they diagnose, uh, it is a predefined bands which diagnose the species of the NTM. So, we cannot stop just with the identification of the species of non tuberculous mycobacteria. What we also have to do is a drug susceptibility profile of these NTM because they vary for each organism and they are very much different from M tuberculosis. The rapidly growing NTM are usually resistant to rifampicin and isoni acid, while they are sensitive to other kinds of macrolides and cephalosporins. Susceptibility testing for M abscess also varies and they need to have a larger group of drugs uh, where a DST has to be ordered. Other important reason why you should have a drug susceptibility profile is some of the drug susceptibility pattern may not correlate so well with the clinical response of a patient. And they also form a prognostic indicator for the treat uh, for the management of these patients, especially in cases of MAC or MAVM complex. Resistance to macrolides as well as to amikacin is, has been shown to be associated with treatment failure. Also, M cancer si, the in vitro resistant to rifampicin, is a very high prognostic marker for treatment failure to M cancer si pulmonary disease. Thank you. With this, we come to the end of session 1.